Okay, welcome everyone to our next podcast, iTech Triad Live. Today we got an interesting one for you guys. We're going to be talking some latest news in Android, including an HTC event on March 25th. Looking forward to that. Uh, we also have some iPhone 6 leaked photos, as some of you probably saw last week. We're going to talk a little bit about that. And our main topic has actually been switched. Last week we said we're going to talk about uh, Android skins versus stock Android. We moved that back to March 4th, which we're going to have a special show coming up then. Uh, let's explain more about that towards the end of this podcast. But today's main topic will be a fanboy man. Why don't Android fans understand Apple? And why don't Apple fans understand Android? So I'm joined by Andrew and Ben. How are you both doing today, guys? Perfect. Doing good. Yep. Well, that is just shabby and awesome. Okay. Shabby. So let's uh, very shabby. Let's get into <laughs> our first uh, news of Android. I want to say Oppo just to make fun of Andrew, but I won't. The Oppo <laughs> Find 7 launch date. Expectations? Ben, Andrew? What, what are your thoughts on this? Well, the Apple Find 7 is going to launch on May, not May, March 19th of this year in Beijing, which, you know, isn't really a surprise. I'm glad to finally have a release date. Um, I can't wait for this phone. It's going to be impressive to see what it's going to have on it. I got to say, I like I like Oppo as well. They I follow them on Instagram, and they, they're very aggressive. They're aggressive. I, I like that. And I guess a lot of our podcast listeners realize that I like a lot of aggressive companies. It's it's good for the market. But uh, so again, that's uh, what was it, Ben? March. It was March nineteenth. March nineteenth yep. in China. Don't die. Yeah. Okay. Um, so. That phone is going to be incredible. It's supposed to have a two K display, five point five inches, three gigs of RAM, thirteen megapixel camera, Snapdragon eight hundred five. It's it, this is gonna be a crazy phone. And I have yet to get my hands on one of those. I have not seen one at a store. I, I know. Well, it's it's a Chinese phone, so you're not going to really see it very much in the United States. Do, there is there any um, is there any information on pricing? No, because um, obviously what what we know is basically because Oppo told everybody they post a lot of teasers and mm-hmm. basically reveal everything but the design. They're aggressive. <laughs> Aggressive, exactly. Doing. That's Actually, what I love I, about I, yeah, I like that. I like that strategy they have. Is you know you let everyone know what you have, and that makes people excited for it. Yep, very so, true. Yep, very, very true. Work. Okay, now back to our little tips and tricks wizard over here, with all the information. Ben G two Mini. We're also hearing about that. That's been teased um, as well, right? I, I can say I wasn't expecting it. I yeah. Don't know. I hope they don't. It, I just hope LG is not one of the companies that says a small phone means small specs. Oh yeah, I hope not either. And I noticed. I don't know if it's something throughout. We have. It seems like we always have a mini of major flagship devices with yeah. an Android. It seems like you have the HTC, the HTC. I mean HTC One, HTC One Mini. Uh, you also have. You have the. Galaxy S4, S4 Mini, then again, Samsung has 50 devices every day. <laughs> but I noticed that, which is funny. And then the funny thing, of course, is the mini devices usually equals what we're looking under, like under 4.5 inches on the display, right, most times. Yeah, which in a way is a good thing. Um, mm-hmm. The G2 Mini, they did actually post a picture of it next to a G2 from the back. So we know how big it is compared to the phone. We just don't know what the size of the screen is going to be. Based on what it looks like in the picture, it's probably going to be a 4.5 to 4.7 inch display, which some people will love. Other people like me are just going to continue loving the regular size of the phone. Yeah, so it's it's going to be it's going to be interesting. But I do agree with you. I hope that mini does not mean they cut down on the specs, because yeah, because the G2 is an incredible phone. It's got a Snapdragon 800, 13 megapixel camera. It's it's an impressive phone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see what uh, what they do with the G2 Mini. Also, we have the G Pro 2. Yeah, which that was leaked a while back, and then LG decided to make it official before MWC, which was kind of interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I've been I've been wanting to get my hands on one of those uh, the Pros too, but and the Pro the G Pro 2 is a very very capable device. I would put that right in line with Note 3 because. 
it's actually got a bigger display than the Note 3. Yeah, it seems like a phablet market is just it's just taking off. Which, and I'm I'm a big a personal fan of of those big screen devices. But I got I gotta say I like uh, I like LG for the most part, especially after seeing your G2. They seem to be one of those companies that really is just kind of getting things together, moving forward. And I know they're definitely gonna be giving a hard time to uh, your other other markets such as um, Samsung and. Not so much. It really depends. Different field, so I'm not going to even keep blabbing on about that. But um, also, I'm kind of moving quick with the Android news so we can kind of get to our main stuff here. Uh, we have the Google Play Services 4.2 Chromecast apps coming. Hmm. I like that. Well, I'll um, refine that a little bit. Google Play Services 4.2 was what was required to make the new Chromecast apps work with the SDK. Mm-hmm. So now that that rollout is complete, all those apps can be released. Um, mm-hmm. We haven't seen any yet, but they're obviously coming. Which is good. Is out. And that's what we talked about last week. Uh, we were talking about how now that Chromecast is going to become its own. It, it already is a beast, but it's going to become even more of a beast now the fact that it's so open mm-hmm. uh, to developers now. So that's going to be very interesting to see that. Uh, also, I always get this wrong. Kush, I think I got it this time. Kush shows Android mirroring to Chromecast. I remember we also talked about this last week, as in now he was finally able to, because the developer was, right, before... Well, last, last week what we were talking about was his app Allcast, which allowed you to stream local files to Chromecast originally, and then it was broken, and mm-hmm. then we fixed it. This is a completely new thing. This is literally, I can take my G2 or my Nexus 7, and mirror it to my Chromecast. Which is, that's pretty much like, uh, well, no. That's like this AirPlay is... on the... Um, Apple yeah, TV. on a- Apple TV. Yeah, because the AirPlay, I remember, see, I remember using AirPlay, and it was very laggy, so it's going to be interesting to see. Mm-hmm. I in, mean, like, in the painfully demo, laggy. Yeah, in the demo he released, it is it does, it is very laggy, and there's nothing we can do about that, because mm-hmm. the Chromecast isn't even designed for this. Mm-hmm. So it's impressive that he's even getting this to work. Mm-hmm. I would say this is mainly for displaying extra content, like I can put up my pictures. I wouldn't go up and play a game on it. Right? Yeah, or even stream Netflix in any way, which of course mm-hmm. you can already do with with the Chromecast. So even even just stream plain video at all, I would probably yeah. not do that. Music but, uh, maybe. Yeah, I yeah music, music I could see. Yeah, I could see that being being streamed directly to it because that, that's not really gonna it's not gonna be that laggy. It's music. Mm-hmm. I mean, worse, worse is you get a little bit of buffering here and there. It's behind, but yeah. that's worst case scenario. Now, probably one of my favorites to see here on the rundown: HTC event March twenty fifth. <laughs> I'm looking yep. forward to this phone. I, think I am too. Is. It's it's exciting. Yes. Now, earlier this evening, the name I yeah. I don't I don't. <laughs> Uh, to HTC, I mean, he could have stuck with the M8. I mean, this isn't official, but all new one? I mean, that sounds like something straight out of Star Wars. It might as well be official, though, because EV Leaks, or Ev Leaks, I don't... I, I've always called it EV Leaks. I know a lot of people call it Ev Leaks, but anyway. They posted that the phone was not going to be called the OnePlus, which it had rumored to be called. Which would have been but cool. It's, which would have been great, but uh, there's copyright issues with that, but... Mm-hmm. Apparently it's supposed to be called the all new one, and that's going to be the act- That's supposed to be the actual name of the phone. If you go to buy it in a store, you'll mm-hmm. see a sign that says the all new one. I... <sighs> that would be great if it looked different, but according to leaks, it's not really going to look that different. So it's it's like ah yeah. oh, man, I don't and, know. It's you just call it the. I would I would take HTC One Two over all new one. I would too because it's like what phone do you have? I have the HTC all new one. At that point, I, mean, I would just start calling it the HTC One Two. Yeah, I don't know the name would be. It's like here's my nickname for it. It was like the name. um the iPad the iPad Three. It was called the new iPad. The new iPad. I always called it the iPad Three. When you ever ever you search on on Amazon or or eBay, I put in iPad Three. I never have put the new iPad. So it was like one of those names that really didn't stick, and this it was it was interesting. But uh, I would rather I mean a cool name. I'm just saying kind of going back to the Star Wars fan in me, they should call it the Chosen One. <laughs> um, that would be the HTC Chosen One. 
if it's if it's as good as it is, we we can call it the chosen one. We can call it the chosen one. We'll do yeah. that here at I Take Try. Yeah, and then we'll uh, the it isn't on the rundown, but I was talking with Ben talking with you earlier. You were mentioning the dual flash on the front of the device. Wow, I I, I can't. <laughs> Taking selfies to a whole new level. No, don't, I don't. don't th- they didn't take there. it to a new level. Oppo took it to a new level because that uh, Oppo N1. That's has, right. The camera swivels to the front, so not only True. do you have a dual LED flash, but you have a 13 megapixel camera. True. That is taking selfies. That is taking selfies to a whole new level. I'm not part of the yeah. selfie game, but hey, if you guys are anyone listening. Is trying to up their selfie game. Look at the HTC all new one, or an Oppo. So okay, the now let's the chosen one. The chosen one. The yeah. chosen one. <laughs> you were the chosen one. Okay, let's talk iPhone six. So, kind of going into Apple now. That's kind of it for the Android news. But the iPhone six, we saw some leaked pictures. It was last week. Mm-hmm. Now my jaw dropped when I saw this because I was, if it was it was real, whoo. Good-looking phone. From what we're hearing, though, it might not be real. Gentlemen, what is your input? Do you think it's real? Do you think it's fake? If it is real, I I don't know whether I really wanted to get it just for the looks of it because um, right now my new, next phone is probably going to be right between Android and Apple depending on what the iPhone 6 will be. It's either going to be maybe like the HTC M8, as I'm going to call it, or it's going to be the... <laughs> it's the all-new one. Call it right. The all chosen new. one. I'm going to... Okay. It's either going to be the chosen one or the iPhone 6. Again, it's pricing is really what's throwing me off, but I really want to see what the iPhone 6 will look like because what you posted on a couple of sites, Alex, and what I wrote about, and I got those pictures. I forget where I got them from, but um, they... I'm it kind of looks a little bit different, right? Yeah, I mean, it, it had a shinier quality to it, uh-huh. like a more metal quality to it, but it was bigger, which everyone's been looking forward to and everyone's been excited about to mm-hmm. see because mm-hmm. everyone's always like, oh, wait, you know, Android, the huge screens, 5-inch screens, and Apple's like, look, we got our 4.7-inch screen. Yeah, 4.0, it's like, it's, I wish it was 4.7. Yeah. Oh, that, yeah, that's what they were going to go for. It's so sad. And it was, I got to say, though, I just I as thin as it was though, if Apple could I, I just I couldn't even see how they fit everything in such a thin device. It was just so thin that I mean if it is real you you gentlemen, both of you know my my obsession with minimal art for the past <laughs> That started tw- what, like two days tw- ago? Twenty four hours ago and it's not getting any better. But I just love a beautiful design. And man, if that was the iPhone 6, I mean, that thing could be a brick and I'd still buy it. That's just how beautiful it was. Because really, in other words, I'm not too crazy with iOS. That's pretty much what I'd be buying. But it's just, oh, beautiful. If they get it, if, if they can fit everything into that very thin device, that is just going to be, for me, revolutionary how thin it is. I mean, next thing you know, we're going to be picking up glass. Yeah. Also, this is on the rundown. I wanted to go quickly into the... Uh, I don't know if Ben will mind, but I want to go quickly into what's going to be in the iPhone 6. Mm-hmm. Is no, the go for 8, it. 8 chip. That's pretty interesting because I think it was Samsung that's been recently making all the chips mm-hmm. for Apple up to the A7. Mm-hmm. And um, one of our followers posted a good point. He was uh, talking about how um, whether it would be the same A7 chip, but modified. And I told him that, you know, definitely could be a possibility. We don't know. Because this is an all-new company that started making it. I think it was like TSMC. They're a Taiwan-based company. And they're going to start making the chips. They had already tried to start making those chips back a while ago, but they had some production problems. So Apple kind of didn't, you know, rely on them as much as they did uh, Samsung. So that could be pretty interesting. Maybe that affects performance. Um, we'll have to see. I mean, it's not definite as to mm-hmm. what it will bring, but mm-hmm. it's definitely look something to uh, keep an eye out for. Yeah, it is going to be interesting what what happens with that. Of course, we're looking at a September, uh, looking at possibly September for a release date or announcement, which is not surprising. I would like to see it sooner. I would like to see Apple get a little more aggressive than 
than what they've been recently, and I've mentioned that before. But I guess between now and September, we'll we'll get better details on that. Mm -hmm. Now, before we jump into our wild card, we got a question sent in here through uh, posted on Instagram and Twitter that we were live streaming. If any any of you are listening now, if you want to ask questions through our socials, hit us up now. We'll answer your question here on the podcast. But a Matthew Wentz asked. I heard rumors about Google not making Nexus anymore. Is that true? Ooh, I like this question. You, the, you, I'm, I'm going to take this one a little bit because this has been angering me. I know it has. It started. I know it has. There are <laughs> two reasons why the Nexus program is not going anywhere. <laughs> In my opinion, at least. I, I mean, if it's up to Google if they keep Nexus or not, but I... There's two reasons why it, I don't think it would be going anywhere. One, it's a developer device. It is based for developers. It's got the latest version of Android. It's got an unlockable bootloader. It is made for developers, in my, or developers in mind anyway. Mm -hmm. The other reason is because sales have been getting better. Even though it's a developer device, it's been selling way better every version they make. It, when, yeah. If you look at like the Nexus S, which was the second Nexus, didn't sell well. Galaxy Nexus sold it actually pretty well for what it was, especially since it was the one of the f few LTE phones of its time. Yeah. The Nexus, Nexus 4 sold yeah. very well. The yeah. Nexus 5 has sold very well as well. Yeah. It's not going to beat out Samsung anytime soon. It's not going to beat out LG anytime soon. Yeah. But... It is gaining ground, and it's becoming very popular. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it's going to go anywhere. And honestly, uh, another reason I just I don't buy that they would end it, um, despite the rumors, is the fact of, and I've mentioned this before, the uh, what appeals a lot of people to the Nexus devices is the low cost. If you recall, the Google Play Edition HTC One and the Google Play Edition S4, they do not cost anywhere near what the Nexus 5 does. Dollars. Exactly. And and it makes no sense for Google to cut off this, especially especially with the fact of now we are seeing low-cost devices are becoming pretty pretty substantial here in the market. If you really look at it, you have Motorola. They, they really set the, the bar with the Moto X and the Moto G. Yeah. So it doesn't make any sense for Google to just get rid of this awesome line of phones and then make Google Play Edition devices while... Hey, I love the Google Play Edition devices. I say keep it. Don't get rid of that. But don't put all your eggs in one basket. It makes it just it doesn't seem like something Google would do. Yeah, and one more buy thing it. I'd like to add to that is, first of all, the Google Play Edition HTC One is five hundred and ninety nine dollars, which is just about double what the Nexus Five costs. Mm -hmm. Yep. But the other thing is the tablets. I don't want to forget about the tablets. The Nexus Ten and the Nexus Seven. Mm -hmm. Specifically, Nexus 7 is the Nexus 7 is probably one of the best uh, Android tablets, oh, small definitely. Android tablets, mm -hmm. almost definitely actually. Yeah, and they got rated it's, one of the best by MKBHD. He said it was one of the best tablets he ever used. Even people like CNET and all these other companies, they voted it the best Android tablet available. Mm -hmm. It cost it doesn't cost much. It runs extremely well. It has very good specs, and it sells really well. Yeah, and, and no longer, no longer does um mid range price mean mid range specs. I mean the the Nexus seven and five they had pretty good specs, you know, like you said for what price it actually was. So I mean that's definitely what some people are looking for, especially nowadays. Um, you know these these prices, some of these phones they're really good phones like the HTC One, but again they're double some other phones that are almost not as good but definitely up there in you know specifications so yeah and it's it's just one of those things i it's like to me when i even saw when i saw the rumor for the first time i'm like what in the world did, no it's like it's almost like apple saying it's almost like rumor saying apple no longer going to be making iPhones it's like that, that doesn't make sense it's like it doesn't make any sense i'm not saying nexus and iPhones go in the same basket but that's the Nexus line is like Google's iPhone almost. Mm -hmm. and the fact of that—that that is what really—I I don't know—it just really is a part of Google, 
and I just don't see it going anywhere. I mean, I'd I'd be shocked personally if if they did. Yeah, and uh, we're not saying that it's not going to happen. We're not saying that it is going to happen, but we I don't want to look at it as this is definitely going to happen just because some guy on Twitter who mm-hmm. sometimes gets it right. I mean, he has been right. He predicted the Galaxy S4 launch date to the hour. Mm-hmm. But I'm not going to say he's right on this because I can see where it could come from, but I just can't imagine Google doing that because of the success it's had over the past couple of years. It'd be more shocking than when they sold Motorola, pretty much, <laughs> in the beginning. Uh, It'd be yeah. more shocking than that because it's, it's, it's one of the things that, like I said, I just don't see Google doing something like that. Okay, so let's move in looking at our time frame here. Wildcard. Let's talk Asus Chromebooks, Ben. I'm going to let you kind of take over on that, and then we're going to go into Mario Kart 8 for some of our younger listeners. I know you guys are probably going crazy about that, but Ben, Chromebooks. Well, the Asus Asus had a leak. It's showing that they are going to release some Chromebooks this year, two models. I'm not sure what they're going to have in them. It's basically just, you know, Asus is going to make Chromebooks. Hopefully they'll do a good job on it. I mean, there's not much to say on it, but I just, I mean, I hope, I'm glad it's bringing more competition into the Chromebook market, mm-hmm. and I, I'm excited to see what they're going to do. And Chromebooks are growing like wildfire. That's something I've been seeing a lot. Mario Kart 8, May 30th, right? Yep. That's so. going to be, that's, I mean, I've, I'm, I'm a fan of those games. They are fun. I spent more hours than I care to admit on the Wii, <laughs> on the Wii version. Oh, no. <laughs> but... Oh no! It's a good game. It is. It is though, and and really, I know Nintendo is probably very happy for that because that's probably the one game that the Mario games are the ones that kind of keep it afloat. Mario should just make their own game console. <laughs> oh, that that is, they they should just make it a Mario console. Just call it the Nintendo Mario. <laughs> It'd probably sell really, really good. Okay, um, we're gonna have time. Windows Phone 8.1 leak. Um, well, Windows Phone 8.1 is has been rumored for a while, and mm-hmm. obviously it's the next point in Windows Phone. Which mm-hmm. Windows Phone, I have a lot of faith in that operating system. I think it is going to be a great operating system. Mm-hmm. They, I it think they just time to grow. And developers, they need they need developers. Well, they have most of the major apps right now. Basically, all they're missing right now that matters is Google Apps, and that's because well. If I was Google, I wouldn't exactly support Microsoft after that Scroogled campaign. Yeah, so they kind of cut their own two legs there with but doing anyway, that. Um, Windows Phone 8.1, it's bringing some new features, nothing extremely notable. Um, it's, pro- it's probably one of the larger updates to Windows Phone 8, so mm-hmm. we don't know when it's coming, but uh, if you check out the site, there is an article and a 12-minute video that includes a full look at all the new features in that build. So, so that's um, you'll have to go interesting to see what uh, Microsoft does with that. Okay, let's move on to our main topic. And like I said, we kind of um, we kind of got switched here. Real quick, actually, before we go to our main topic, I just got a notification here. We've got some questions from you guys on this video. Ben, can you get those questions for us? We've got some questions, I guess, there in the comment section of this uh, live stream. So... Uh, Just bear with us. We'll get to your questions. Let's see what we've got. Let me try to pull those up. Viewer mail. Hopefully it's not something like, how do you turn on a MacBook? Or how do you eject a CD out of a MacBook? Um, Galaxy S5 fingerprint scanner. What do you think? Ooh. Um, hopefully they can make it just as good as Touch ID. From what I hear, it's supposed to be on the home button of the S5. So, of course, no soft keys with that. Of course. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah. But it's going to be interesting to see. I wonder how the layout's going to be, though, because you know how the, the 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 home button on the Galaxy S5, when it's kind of got a weird shape to it. So it's going to be interesting to see how they rearrange that. Yeah. Well, what so, I heard was that it was going to work similar to how it does on the One Max, on the HTC One Max, <laughs> where you swipe your finger instead of just put it down like Touch ID. So. Mm, so that's gonna be interesting. Yeah. Any um, more any more questions there, Ben? Who asked that question? So we can 
That was Timothy. Timothy. Better not be the Timothy I know. Mm. Okay, next question. Any other uh, ones? That's all we had. That's all we got. Okay. One, awesome. One thing I, I do want to real quick point out is um we could definitely see that. Also, I was hearing, you know, things, I don't know if this is completely true, but maybe there could be some kind of thing like an iris scanner, which would be pretty interesting. Just definitely to see on a mobile device, because those are expensive things to come up with. Mm -hmm. I know um, some of the professional ones, they, they can be pretty high up there in price. So that, that could be a pretty interesting thing to see. Definitely add some security. I, um, I think I think that'd be something we'd see more. It's kind of like, you know, a few years ago we heard about the fingerprint scanner. I think that's going to kind of be how it is now with the iris scanner. I mean, I couldn't see it with the S5 just because of price and technology-wise. Um, I was listening to a podcast from uh, Pocket Now, and they were kind of talking about that. That the fact of they're just getting some iris scanners for PCs, so yeah. I think it'll be a little bit. But I think I could actually see it happening a few years from now, kind of like we saw. We saw. I mean, I think it was like, don't quote me on this, but like two, two and a half years ago is when we saw the rumors of Apple. Yeah looking into getting a fingerprint scanner for a future device, and we thought it was going to be with the iPhone 5, but ended and up that was, with the 5S. Yeah, that, that was a big move, too. It I mean, was. I was really surprised. I was like, did they actually do that? Because I was sketchy at first. I was like, those are interesting rumors. And then it came out, and it was like, that's actually pretty amazing for what it is. Yeah, so. it, it, it definitely makes unlocking your device... Uh, with more ease. So, okay, well, that's our questions. Thank you, everyone, for asking the questions today. We're going to go into our main topic. We're going to talk fanboy van. Who? Fanboys get on my nerves. We're going to yeah, talk about. I can have some fun with this one. Yeah. <laughs> why don't Android fans understand Apple and why don't Apple fans understand Android? So, kind of two parts here. Let's talk about the first one. Why don't Android fans understand Apple? I can see who wants to take a first jab at this. I. I you, you guys. It's okay. all about opinion, I think. Mm -hmm. It's a lot about opinion. Um, I don't know. It's, it's definitely about what you started out with. They're really nice OSs. I've used both. They're extremely nice OSs. Um, but depending on what you start out with, you kind of grow into what that is, and you're not. Especially when I was Apple, I was definitely involved. Like I didn't even want to pay attention to Android stuff. But I definitely ignored all that other stuff. Like, I kind of put it to the side. I didn't want to address how good Android was doing because I was just so focused on Apple. I mean, that could definitely be why um, Android fans, <laughs> you know, both ways. Yeah, I, I agree with that because I was the same way when I was sadly an Apple fanboy. But you know what I really think, and some Android fans might agree, I think a lot, it's both fanboys make each other hate the other OS, frankly, because I think Android fans look at Apple fans as young teenagers who are stuck in Starbucks all day <laughs> and don't know anything else, and as I've heard some Android fans say, and is not true at all, but some Android fans say, oh, well, Apple fans, they don't know anything. They're, they're stupid. They're dumb. It's not true. See, the thing is, it's like I said, it's the fanboys cause their own own rift in between. You know, I could see why they don't understand iOS, why they might not like it, especially on the customization side. Android fans are so used to be able to do what they want with their device, where Apple is more they have things on lockdown. Everything's just more direct, it's more constrained. And I could see why Android fans do not like Apple. That's that's pretty much what I've got. Ben, do you do you got any input on that? Well, I mean, I've used Android all, all my time with a tablet and a smartphone. I've always used Android phones and tablets, but, I mean, I love Android for what it is. I love iOS for what it is. But there are pe I can understand why people say, you know, I don't like iOS. It's too um, restricting. It's too, ex it, it, in some cases, it's expensive because, you know, you have to, the devices are generally more expensive. And then I can see where P Apple fans don't like Android because they've had bad experiences with it. If you look at previous versions of Android, it was very laggy. It was yeah. very unstable. That was definitely but my problem. Mm -hmm. now, I was I was I was like beta Android. I was looking and I was like, what is this? What what's going on here? So 
And I that's when I started to just ignore it. And sadly, like you and uh, uh, Alex, I was an Apple fanboy for a long time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. it's I can I can see kind of going on to our second part here why Apple fans don't understand or or even like Android. Um, when before when I was an Apple fan, what I didn't like, of course, like Ben you mentioned, I had used um it was HTC Evo. I hated it. Was laggy, confusing. It, I didn't see the customization in it. I just did not like it. <clears throat> One thing that I can understand why some people who have used Apple before things they don't like about Android, and for example, and I've mentioned this before, kind of going with the HTC One, was the fact of a lot of the devices were plastic. It had a real cheap feel to it. So when you were using an iPhone, you were kind of always spoiled because it had a premium feel. And and honestly, when when you buy a device, it's like, I can get this phone for $199, I can get this phone for $199. Some who might not know better, they might be like, well, this is a better looking device. I'm going to go with this. That could be some of the reason. But I think a lot of it has to do, kind of like we mentioned last week, developers, apps. I think that's what keeps Apple fans where they are, the apps and also the premium devices. Like The one device I would suggest to get someone off an iPhone to try Android, there's two devices I would put in their hand. A Nexus 5, because of stock Android, simplicity. Mm-hmm. And, and it's also, not a bad built phone. And it's, it's No, it's a beautifully it's a built great, phone. It's a great build, it's just it's still plastic. Yeah, and, but it's it's a, it's a premium feeling device, it's in, not, in other it's words. Not hyper, it's not the hyperglaze like what's on the G2 or the S3 and S4. Exactly, yes. And, and, and also the fact of stock Android. You know, a lot of a lot of Apple fans they look at TouchWiz, and and they're like, oh well, this is confusing and annoying. Look at all this bloatware. They don't like that. Yeah. This, and this is what I've been saying for a while. It's not exactly Apple versus Android, but it's Apple uh, computers versus PCs. This is also something interesting. I always labeled. I I didn't mind using both. I definitely liked PCs a little more, because with PCs it was a lot of development. More than anything, it was for programming, development, stuff like that. And I looked at Apple computers as more of the arts, like, you know, music, photography, movies, a lot of stuff like that. And that, that kind of goes into Apple versus Android, is Apple is a lot of design and the way it looks. They're all about that. Android is about freedom, I can I guess you would say. Like Functionality. Being to, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. That, that could be definitely be a purpose for complaining about both. Yeah, and I'm just going to kind of put it this way. Um, now I've kind of realized in the past 24 hours, and Ben, I know you guys are probably going to laugh at this, but one of the things I realized that I loved, I, you guys already know where I'm going with this. Yep. One of the things I loved about Apple devices is the fact of the hardware. I am a hardware freak. When it comes to hardware, that is the one thing that, I mean, if I could put, like, I know this sounds horrible, but if the iPhone 6, they would have 4.4 on it, I would be all over that phone like like <laughs> nothing else, especially cameras. You, you act like I wouldn't. Yeah, oh, it would, I know you would too. But it's the, <laughs> what, what Apple stands for, I think, is really what keeps them going. Mm-hmm. The simplicity, the minimal design of that phone. I have had a new appreciation. I texted you both yesterday. I said no one should ever diss a Nexus 5 or an iPhone 5S or an iPhone 5 ever again. And I said yeah. hardware, not software. I'm talking hardware. Because it's just Apple builds beautiful devices and they have an experience around it. Mm-hmm. When you, I, I, I can't... People who, who have used Apple devices, you know what I mean? It's, it's almost like an experience when you unbox their products. And I was reading Steve Jobs' biography. It's taking me a year and a half, and I'm still not even done. But one of the things he talked about was the fact of they actually focus in on the box. That's how detailed they are. Mm-hmm. The yeah, unboxing definitely. experience, they actually tested it out, and they worked on it for a while. They said, how can we make this an experience? Which I can see that is what keeps Apple fans kind of. That's why you have the i sheep, is because of that. They they it's the experience. Should they be bashing Android? No, 
and I think Ben, you kind of know where I'm going with the Android. It's the fact of yeah. functionality. Yeah. W well, the way I'll put it, you know, people who use a Mac and people who use iOS, they uh, and I know someone's probably gonna say something about this, but they are looking for something that is easy to use from the moment they get it. Mm -hmm. If you People I agree. Use, when I get an Android phone, I know I need to set it up. I know I need to customize it the way I want it to look. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you get an iPhone, if I get an iPhone, uh, that's the last thing on my mind. I'm just going to open it up and download the apps I want to use, and I'm done. Change your wallpaper. That's it. Yeah, and and that's the thing though. You know, and and anyone who who, you know, what if you're offended by this, you're an Apple fan, but pretty much. I would suggest Apple devices. Like, if I had an older person come up to me, and they're just getting into the smartphone market, and they're looking for a device to use, the first thing I would go with is an iPhone. Yeah. Now I'm gonna stop you because that's the last thing I would recommend them. See, it's an and older, the but older the reason, person. The reason for that is because of the screen size. Well, screen size. Well, I mean, if they're not blind, if they're blind, yeah. But I mean, like, no. I mean, it, almost anyone, because, I mean, I would, I would actually recommend a bug. I would, but that's I would just not. Me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if say they need a smartphone, I'm not gonna recommend them an iPhone first thing, mm -hmm. because they're probably not gonna be able to see it. I'm going to recommend them something easy to use. That has a large screen. I would probably recommend them a Nexus 5 if they have that on their carrier. If they need something like... I mean, one of the devices I find actually would work perfectly for someone mm -hmm. older who needs a larger screen but still somewhat simple mm -hmm. would be the actually the HTC One Max. See, you know why... Sense is, Sense is simple, mm -hmm. and the HTC One Max has a massive screen. See, so I would... That's where if, I would go. If they're blind, if they're blind, yeah. But my and thing is, I just want to get an iPad if they need something simple. I yeah. told you, jitterbug is where it's at. <laughs> See, my thing is though, like, it, it really, if if they're, it, it really depends on the person. Like an older one, reason I say just getting into the smartphone market, like you have some that have been around technology. It's like okay, the fact of I've seen so many older ones that they have an Android device. And they're just like, how do I do this? 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 Because they don't know anything technology, really. So they're like, how do I do this? Yeah. And then someone comes along, and I've seen it happen a few times. Someone comes along, apparently, says, oh, Grandpa, you got an HTC One. Hmm. I can get me an HTC One now. Hey, Grandpa, you want to trade my iPhone 5 for your HTC One? Hmm. This is going good. Grandpa's like, yeah, let's trade. Grandpa ends up loving the iPhone 5. <laughs> Grandpa's like, whoa. No, no, now you're speaking from experience here. It, no, I, I sold my <laughs> iPhone 5. No, no, no. It was, you traded your iPhone 5 for an S3. I'm not going to say to who to. No, actually, I traded my, I traded my, I traded my S, yeah, my iPhone 5 because they were oh. having a hard time with Android. They had like the Apple. Uh -huh. I said, try this, which really I would keep my iPhone 5 over an S3 any day. But, <laughs> Actually, until up, you had cyanide mod on it. Until I had cyanide mod, even then I couldn't stand the the screen on it, and the camera was just ugly. Cause it's an older. It's an wow. Older no, it's. I mean, the camera's good. Uh, and the uh, screen was good. The S3 compared to the iPhone 5, the S3 okay. had an ugly camera. Okay, I'll I'll give you the screen thing because you are Mr. Brightness. I like 1080p. I mean, Put that I mean, then why are you getting an iPhone? Because they don't have 1080p screens. I mean, you know, a good-looking display doesn't... You, you don't oh. care about pixels. You care about how bright it gets. Bright and, and the color. Because the color was just horrible on the S3. No, that's AMOLED. No, I mean, like, the color was just saturated. On yeah, the that's, screen. Am that's AMOLED. Yeah, and which is actually funny because the S3 screen is now officially dying. I forgot to mention it to you. It's got a big black spot that keeps growing. It's infected. <laughs> well, it's infected with TouchWiz. It is a two-year-old phone, so. Yeah, but it, it really it really depends because I've seen so many people, they, they're they like, oh, man, older ones, I love my iPhone now. And then it's like, oh, no, they just created an iSheep. But it's <laughs> it, nonetheless, it's it's really, it's I think the, there's different things. I think the, it's almost like Apple's got like a style trend pretty much. 
that that's really what it is. If you really think about it, Apple's almost a style trend. It's almost like mm-hmm. Nike's Beats. Yeah. You know what I mean? All, all those things kind of you see on the same person. Yes. Yeah, on the street. Exactly. It, it's almost it's almost people use it for fashion statement. And I'm not I'm not saying it's it's a bad thing because you know what I've been missing my iPhone like you have no clue recently because there's just some apps I've been wanting to try. There's reasons for it. But I notice a lot of times people will get, and it's more teenagers. Oh, so you get an iPhone? Yeah. Why'd you get an iPhone? My friend's got one. Yeah. It's like all right. That's... A lot of people don't even pay attention to these yeah. things anymore. It's it's a lot of um, I don't want to say peer pressure. I want to say just to be socially accepted, kind of. Um, it... I know that's why. Actually, before a while ago, that's when I got my first iPhone. It was because I thought they looked really cool. I really liked them, and I still do like them. But now mm-hmm. I've grown to appreciate, you know, programming that's gone into it, hardware, mm-hmm. software, mm-hmm. everything. Yeah. You know, and it's really kind of amazing how much you can fit into such a small device. Mm-hmm. And that's what you know I kind of appreciate about a lot of the new Android phones too, mm-hmm. is they're getting better and better. And mm-hmm. I'm really starting to like the way they look and the OS. Yep. And I'm actually I'm I haven't tried a Windows phone yet, and I want mm-hmm. to really bad. Mm-hmm. And yeah, you're not alone on that one. I do. Yeah. Uh, hey, put me on the list because I feel the same way. And it's <laughs> it's also a functionality too, really, of yeah. just Android. So much you can do. Oh, yeah. Wait, Alex, mm-hmm. if you want a um, minimal design, you better go get yourself a Windows phone. <laughs> you oh, can't no. get much more min- much more don't, minimal than don't, that. Do not tempt me. <laughs> not, do not seriously tempt you the cannot, monster. You literally me. cannot get more minimal than that. Do not tempt this monster it's because one, it's one color and black. I mean, you, you can draw, them. you can draw a line on a piece of paper, and I'm like, ooh, <laughs> that's how bad it is. That is, it's just really bad. I mean, someone can just go to to a piece of paper with a black marker, draw a line, and I will sit there and look at it. And I'll just be like. <laughs> This is this yeah this is sad. Anyway, back introducing to the, the iPhone six. Okay, yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, let's go back to what we were doing. What were we doing? We were we actually were we were talking up the Android and Apple. Apple fans, and that's pretty much it. Apple's yeah. fashion statement: minimal design for the win. And Android has functionality, but then of course, like, let me kind of go back to the Apple. I'd say Not functionality, cool. customization. And price. And Apple simplicity, uh, design, experience. Pretty much. I mean, it's it's an experience when you own an Apple product. I, I have to say that that I stand behind that 100%. It's it's an, it's almost an experience. For some, it's a bad experience. For some, when the experience is good, it is it's it's great. But um, but yeah, that pretty much does it for our main topic. Now our teaser for next week. We're going to be talking benefits of jailbreaking slash rooting. So if you take that big step to break the warranty, what are the benefits? What are the pros? What are the cons? Is it worth it? We're going to be talking about that next week. So anything you guys wanted to conclude with before we end, Mm. before I go through this amazing message I've got for our listeners? Oh, yeah. Nope, you go for Um, that. No, just this is happening like you probably know every Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Yep, every Tuesday, and then um, coming up, we're gonna be, we're gonna have a guest on the show, um, mm-hmm. CEO two over week, from two weeks from now. Yeah, two weeks from now. Yep. March fourth. It's um, I don't know if you guys are any of our listeners are really into Android, but there is one tech review company called Android Meter, and they are, they have a website. Mm-hmm. Check them out. It's AndroidMeter.com, right, Ben? Yep. Yeah, and I saw their website beautifully. I mean, beautifully designed website. I just, I was like, wow. But uh, anyway, on March 4th, we're going to be having a podcast with them. We're going to have Justin, the CEO there at Android Meter, and he'll probably have someone else maybe from the team there. So it's going to be a pretty cool uh, podcast. And that's where we're going to be talking a little bit more about the rooting. Um, it was, it was excuse no, me, Android, Android skins, skins. Versus, versus stock Android. So we're going to yes. leave that for March 4th have Justin on the show, and it's going to be definitely more interesting than it would have been today because yep. Android Meter, hey, we're looking forward to it. But anyway, yeah. before we yeah. go, this is just a message for our listeners. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast if you want more. Each week we have the podcast. Um, the podcasts are actually available on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, 
Pocket Cast, which is an awesome app. Been using that lately, so definitely suggest you download that. Available on Pocket Cast and uh, also here on YouTube. For those listening live, you can subscribe to our channel, youtube.com slash itechtriad, where you can also subscribe. You'll get our videos and our podcasts. And also links are available on our website, itechtriad.com slash itechtriad live. So be sure to leave a rating. Share this podcast with your friends. Thank you, everyone, for listening to our latest podcast. I'm Alex. I'm joined by Ben and Andrew. Gentlemen, we will talk next week. Alex posted something new. Man, you and your minimum home screen. Oh my gosh, the minimal is just... <laughs> ah, don't, don't even get me started on minimal. No, I'm unliking that. No. Ben, give me the countdown. Five, four, wait, three... Wait, I didn't have the one down. I needed the one down. Oh my god. <laughs> that was about to be a disaster. I mean, a real life disaster. Because you know you're doing. You literally... Well, no, I would have started talking, and that would have been like, so I forgot my rundown. Now I might as well go and look for it. We gave him the link twice. Within I know. Second. It's just Hangouts is being stupid today. It's probably oh. lost. Oh, my God. I'm start with that again. Stop. I really want to say the last part in my voice. What's the last part? The the don't forget. I, I have this urge to be like, don't forget to just so nope. You know I'm not what? gonna do it. See yeah, you are gonna up. do it. You are gonna do it because at the end I'll be like, uh, Andrew, take it away. <laughs> Andrew can be like, <clears throat> don't forget to subscribe to the podcast if you want more. Uh, We're available on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, Pocket Cast, and more. It's available at our website www.itechtried.com slash itechtriedlive. Leave a rating and be sure to share it with your friends. Thank you and have a good day. Oh. Um...